But if you hit a bristle for a thousand damage, you still only proc one quill. You don't proc five quills in a row. So it's pretty cool that you can actually just like burst him down in a way without him just dealing out an incredible amount of damage. And you have the war cry, yeah. which helps your IO versus bristle back. Because playing IO versus bristle back can be a little bit of a kind of hard thing, but with, with Sven it makes it a lot easier. It's funny because it's what Zai was saying, as if this is what EG wanted. Whether it's so that they can just figure out how they're going to play without these heroes in a big stage, yeah. or whether it's because they have other strategies in mind, probably a combination of the both. I mean, Tia's coming up, they don't just want to be winning an entire tournament doing Sa Sand King Puck every game, but... This is going to be putting them in that position now. They instilled fear, for sure, with yeah. those heroes. And I think it's a really good thing from Liquid to do that. Like, just get rid of those heroes, make EG just play a completely different kind of game. Ooh. There we go. The Tusk is back. Ayo Tusk, though. It's not the strongest lane presence between mm -hmm. these two heroes. It has to support you. It's not all that conventional. I do feel like Liquid's lanes can be pressured here. I think Tusk yeah. is good for setting up Ayo Relocates later. I would say that's maybe one of his strengths. And you can also do things like uh, block off Bristleback, prevent him from retreating. It might be easier to deal with him at certain stages. In what way does Tusk help set up those IO relocates? Because you, you always want somebody that can ideally have enough disable that you can buy them two seconds to jump in and then follow up. So usually you want Nyx instead, uh, but Tusk can force a fight to be elongated, is my thought about it. I want it. to say he's not like a hero that's going to go roam around looking for relocates by himself. That's maybe more mind control right. hero. But it is, I do agree, there is some potential for the, the setup there. I really like the Tusk into the clock. You can do like a lot of things to get your Sven out of that, you know, outside the cogs. Because with Clockwork here, they pick it up instantly versus Sven because it's been known as a counter kind of to the Sven because it's a BKB piercing disable. You can grab him inside the cogs and then Sven has a little bit of awkwardness to get out. But Tusk, you snowball right through, you bring him out, or we've seen the clever uses of ice shards. You just ice shard and push him out kind of in a way. Could see some kind of innovation like that coming out from Kuro. We know Kuro is master of Tusk when yeah. he's in the group stages. Yeah. Really nice thing right now with EG's draft is the flexibility. Bristleback can be run in all three lanes, Clockwork can be run in two, so they can just wait and see what Liquid do and then decide, all oh, right, we're going to bristle in this lane. And we get with this matchup, Clockwork could be Universe, could be full position, full position for Zai. They have this insane ability just to mix up their lanes based on what Liquid pick here. I mean, it's greedy, but... I'm going to say they, they need something that's going to be able to deal with the Bristleback and just scale because Sven is going to get kited at various stages of, of this game. Yeah, they brand Miracle on the Sven most of the times, and Matu played mid after that, but there's definitely the, still the, yeah. the, you know, he could definitely play Sven. Were, were all those games with Lone Druid, though? Like, I, I don't think they've done that without the Lone Druid. believe too. so, yes. The grand final meta is real already. Both of these teams Ooh. have got three or oh, four. Oh, wow. We'll that's, come back for to the, that. that's for the bristle. We banned Necro versus bristle. Yeah, we banned <laughs> Necro. <laughs> yeah, but it's, We're it's setting just... the meta for the grand final, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Lol. Um, Heartstop War is really good. Does a percentage of his HP just as, as time goes on. You can heal, AoE heal, which is up and offset some of what the AoE damage bristleback does. And then if you get him facing you at the right time, you can ulti him which does damage based on how much he's missing, so it'll really help you kill it's, him when he's low. It's incredibly good with Io too. You get the double heals coming out, Darkshire's gonna naturally build a mech, you're gonna have these like what this war cry necrophos who can have so much like backup kind of with it. And they go for Kunkka, so it's gonna be a clockwork off lane oh. it looks like. And it's gonna be Zai playing Kunkka. I like the Kunkka pick a lot. It's very good for the mobility that looks like. That hero. Necrophos. Hero is very underrated. And teams have finally been exploring more and more counters to Bristleback. We saw how useful and incredible uh, the Sven was to counter the Bristleback yesterday. And let's see if they can pull it off today combined with the Necro. Necro, he doesn't have that much armor. I would say that's probably the only downside about him in this game. But he is very good versus tankiness of the Bristleback if you can manage to Reaper him while he's facing you. Yeah, absolutely. Just having that to, to cut down through what otherwise could be this beast that's impossible to bring down, as we've seen in a number of games. And again, you know, Liquid doing something else a little bit different. We have seen it before from them, but putting the Sven in the mid lane, something that no one else is really doing. But Miracle, he, he's comfortable on this hero in certain mid lane matchups. And he's with the Wisp, so that makes it a lot easier, generally, versus Storm. You don't really want a melee hero, uh, because they suffer a lot, because you can't ever harass a Storm. You just drop Remnant, and you just get screwed badly. Uh, so, looking at the light pole, what, 2 to 1? Maybe 3 to 2 in favor of IG? Or EG, sorry. IG. <laughs> it's like, wait, EG, yeah. I, the exclamation point threw me off. I was going to say IEG. But, uh, but no, absolutely, yeah. Slight edge for EG. I think that, that pretty much, I think a lot of people would agree in terms of that slight edge for EG. 
uh, coming into this and the runs that both of the teams have had, considering their whole group stages. Looking at all the games, EG arguably have played the better. Dota, but Liquid They've have improved the most, I feel, from start to finish of this tournament. Their odds were already quite low going into the grand finals, uh, like getting here, right? Getting yeah, past no, the getting, yeah, getting to this final level, yeah. So Liquid uh, are definitely going to have the momentum behind them. There is no doubt about that. And here we go, Matu bringing the Necrophos to the main stage. It really is going to be incredibly interesting to see how it goes on. And as we you know, said, Miracle on something that he's done once, but not too common. Kuroki and GH, though, on the other hand, two here and Mind Control. Of course, these three on Heroes, that they, they're like their bread and butter. So the Mind Control with the Darks here, GH with Desire, and Kuro on the Tusk that he brings back. Pretty much every game that they can, we see a Kuroki Tusk. And every game that we can, we also see a uh, IO on yeah. GH. We actually have not seen GH play this here in a while because it is almost always auto banned. But setting up for a hero like the Storm. It's, uh, it's going to be tough for little old GH. But I I think he's one of the best Wisp players. I definitely is. So. The, the, uh, GH has uh, an incredible uh, record with, with I, I imagine, over the years. It's, it's definitely one of the heroes that comes to mind as something that he's incredibly flashy on. Mid lane, already liquid, getting heavy with the harassment onto some mail, making sure the Miracle has that easy time in the opening couple of waves. And, and something, as you said, he needs, because otherwise the Storm can cause issues for us to make the wrap around here. They have they, eyes they on actually see that, yeah. yeah. They could try and roll down upon a Miracle, trying to see if we can close the gap. I'll just go for a bit of a tickle here with the shards, and uh, GH just right-clicking him down from the high ground. This torrent is not going to connect, and in fact, Zai has been spotted out. He's been taken down, Liquid, with the positioning there and the ice shard trap, making sure there's no escape for the Admiral. And in fact, they're going to get this one as well, by the looks of it, with the Storm Hammer and the ice shards. Liquid. They're getting away with murder twice in the middle lane. Zai comes in to try and stop them, but Miracle, he's still full of mana thanks to GH. He can go in for more. Zai trying to body Duke around the tree line. It's not going to be successful. There will be a TP and a frostbite for Crit to hold back Miracle. Has he got the speed to close this down? One more touch will do it. He has the war cry. Zai tries with the torrent, but he's not soon enough to hold Miracle back. Another kill in the middle lane for Liquid. And they're looking, looking for Crit as well. Kuroki, has he got the mana? Has he got the control? Crit will go for a bounty rune. Can Liquid Finish this kill off. Ward's dropped down. They have the vision. Crit looking to be in a lot of trouble as well. He'll try and hide himself here in the tree line, but Liquid surrounding. Mind Control comes across for a piece of the action, and Liquid pick up a fifth kill in the first four and a half minutes. GH and Kuroki doing absolute work. In a lot of trouble. He's got to be careful. Kuroki has that deep ward down. They've got the vision. They know where he is. They come in, trap him in the shards. Miracle being a little hesitant here. Rot trying to juke out the torrent will be unsuccessful. It connect. It doesn't matter though. He just moves in with the god strength. Takes side down. Critting universe coming in. EG trying to do their best to turn this, but the snowballs out. They've got the god strength They're continuing to punch into universe. Universe can he escape from this? He can't. As GH picks up the killing spree, an eighth kill for Liquid. Make that a ninth double kill for Miracle. As Liquid are just not holding back in this middle lane. Just brutality after brutality. And in fact, Zai is he even safe in Kuroki and Miracle. They're still ready to fight. The shards won't block Zai. They do push him away. He has a bit of a chance to get away now. And Samael can potentially look to try and turn or at least find a kill for the side of EG. They've got the torrent onto Kuroki. He will get bursted down. So finally, EG getting themselves on the kill board. But still, Liquid 9 to 1. 4K gold lead in the first seven minutes of this game. And in the meanwhile, you have this Necrophos pushing the safe point tower. The tower's already down. Oh, and they're back. Universe is rather deep here. He's got to be careful. They've got the war cry. Trying to chase. Oh, and Kuroki with that shot. They're buying the time for to close in. The Reaper side won't finish off the kill, but they still get it nonetheless after. 10 to 1. EG just can't keep up. They've already taken down two of the important T1 towers as well. So EG, looking at them, what they need to do, they need to stack and farm Aces with Bristle. I would say maybe even get him involved a little bit early on. He is going for the early Vanguard, but his team is in shambles. They are just so poor and 
constantly top lane, RTZ moving himself in to contest the farm of the Timbermat. Very close to that in the neck row. Only a, a few hundred between the two of them. And in fact, straight away... Wisp just hit six. Yeah. So now they can make a move. Uh, we see a smoke king coming up from the Tumba and Kuro looking up to set up a kill on the Storm Spear. Storm Spear is level eight, so he can jump away, but with relocate... If they side immediately, there's going to be no chance for the escape. Snowball into the side. They didn't even need the relocate, but they'll bring in to witness the death again of Samael. 35 seconds out of the map. They probably didn't know that Wisp was six because they don't have a good observer wars up in that Asian area, and he took out a massive stack that GH and Miracle are already back doing right now. They might sack this T1 tower, but they're still getting more than enough farm around the map. So they're just ignoring our TC because Bristle doesn't farm incredibly fast uh, if he's not taking down Ancients. So they're EGR forced to put Bristle back in the lanes because he's the only hero that's not going to die. But it's hurting their overall farm a lot. EG will claim tier one tower from the top, an extra bit of boost to RTZ's bank. At the same time, Liquid in return taking that bottom tower. But to my man, Rod of Atos first item for this Necro. So an extra bit of control that's going to be very, very hard for Samael to play around. Oh, yeah, that is actually incredibly bad for the storm yeah because as long as they kill him a few times i think they can kite the bristle indefinitely and they have war cry so you can actually ignore this fan or ignore the bristle for first you know seven eight seconds of the fight and just kill everyone else and at this point with the farm distribution on eg it seems like everyone else is going to die aside from the bristle and then they can just deal with them kite him wait for the stacks to fall off and then finally take him down it really seems for, for EG to, to have a chance of winning a fight, it's got to be about the pickoffs. Just in any situation where there's full five heroes on both sides, the, the mass just doesn't check out for EG. They haven't got the damage or the control to out sustain. In fact, Kuroki going in with a, a very deep dive. The tunnel over there to hold him back. But Miracle brought in by GH will find the kill. Bo comes through only to connect onto mind control. Miracle, the rest of the god strength moves down towards the bottom tier two as they could are able to claim another. In fact, they want to try and defend the top tier two. EG were pushing in, but RTZ left around already too low. Takes a reaper side to the base. The snowballs there is catch with the freezing field and Liquid just won't give evil geniuses a break. I think Tusk is actually really good versus Bristle. I think the panel talked about the Sven and the Necropost, but the Tusk is pretty good because with the shards, you actually force him to turn back into you. That's true. That's what we just saw there. He shard him at the tower and what are you going to do? Stay in the shards for the entire duration? You have to turn back into the enemy team so that you can run away. And that brief second that he was faced towards the entire base, he gets reapered in the face. Yeah, it, it seems, yeah, you... You may have complained about the Bristleback <laughs> pickers, but now it's the, it's the Necro Sven pickers you've got to be worried about. These guys coming in with the answers. Kuroki with the strats. And now again with the smoke. Heading across, RTZ is trying to get a break here, farming a big ancient stack. But he may just lose his life and not get anything out of this miracle. Straight up to the high ground. The snowball closing in. Crit will try to TP over to the shrine, but RTZ's already dead. And now Crit, he's in trouble as well. They'll drag him back with the vacuum. A couple of hits, a crit and a punch. And Crit is gone. They'll take the ancients as well. I don't know, man. This game one of the grand finals of Epicenter. And it's got to feel pretty good for Liquid and pretty bad for Evil Geniuses. So this fight, they take out the only team fighter that they have immediately at the start. And GH, is he has Warcry to pop him up. He has the Death Pulse to heal him up. And he also has a Surge. I think he gets all three in the Earth. So there's very little way of killing him. There's just... This is just dirty. I mean, it's straight back into the action in the middle lane. Zai getting caught out at the base. 16 and a half minutes in. The melee rack's in trouble. EG... Have they got any hopes here holding with just the four of them? Minimal items that they've been able to build up in comparison to how stacked liquids are, to heroes are, and there we have it, the vacuum combo comes through, Universe will try and hold them back, but Crit's already fallen, the Blade Melic doesn't matter, they just fight through it, take him down as well, RTZ gets smacked in the face by a hefty uppercut from Kuro, and it's game over, it really is, 17 minutes in, 24 to 1, an absolute beatdown for Evil Geniuses, as Liquid smiles on their face, and it absolutely warranted, they, what, what a way to start the Grand Finals for them.
an incredible just follow through of the momentum that they've been building up all this tournament. So let's just take away from that game. Make sure you protect Sumail a little bit better. You have to think twice about giving them Wisp. Uh, those are pretty much the two main things. Maybe